Hello and welcome to DigiLink's course Introduction to Python for Linguists. My name is Petra Bago. Until now, our code was a set of linear instructions, but now we will learn to control flow. Control flow is the order in which statements are evaluated or executed. When some code is grouped together, we call this a block or a code block. In Python, code blocks are defined by indentation. At the end of the first line, there is a column that declares start of a block. The indentation starts from the second line of the block. The two categories of control flow we are going to cover are selection and iteration. Selection is done by setting a logical condition. If this logical condition is met, a specific set of statements are executed. If the condition is not met, another set of statements are executed. The selection is implemented with the if statement. Using the if statement, we tell the program, if something is true, do this. The second category of control flow is iteration. Iteration is a sequence of statements that are declared once, but can be executed several times in succession. The iteration is implemented using the for loop. Let's take a look first at selection. The syntax of the if statement is the following. If statement, elif statement, else statement. The if statement is the mandatory statement. Elif statement is optional and can be repeated one or more times. And else statement is optional and can be repeated once. Let's take a look at the if statement. If, then we put some condition and then colon. In the next line, the code has to be indented to be considered part of the if statement. In the second line, there is some code that will be executed if the condition is met. The code that has to be executed if the condition is met can be of one, two, three, or more lines of code. All those lines of code have to be indented. Then we have the optional statement elif. Elif statement is a line with the if statement. It can be repeated once or more times. It comes from the phrase else if and contains another condition. If the condition is met, it can also contain an indented block of code ranging over many lines of code. And the last statement is the else statement. It can be repeated only once. It is the last statement and does not contain a condition. It basically means that the code should be executed if none of the above conditions were met. It is important to remember that only code from one of the conditions will be executed and that the first condition that is met will be executed. Let's take a look at some examples. The shortest if statement has one if statement containing one line of code. For example, we can check if 3 is smaller than 5. If this condition is met, that is, if it is true, we will print 3 is smaller than 5. Of course, we can have an if statement with a condition that has not been met, and then nothing happens, like in the second example. In this example, we have an if statement and an else statement. Here we are checking if the variable is divisible by 2. We can check this by finding the remainder of division by 2, and if this remainder equals 0, the number is divisible by 2. If this condition is met, we print the message that the number is an even number. In all other cases, we want the program to return the message the number is an odd number. This example contains the elif statement. Here we have an example of a program returning a message to a student depending on the grade he or she has gotten. If the student received more than 90 points, we want the program to print a message you received an A. If the student didn't receive an A but received points between 80 and, and, and 89, we want the program to print a message you received a B.
and so on. Since we have put the grade to be 65, the program returned the message you received the D. Try writing an if statement and an elif statement without an else statement and see what happens. We can also have an if statement within an if statement. For example, in the top left example, we are checking if the number is divisible by 2. If this is true, then we want to check if the number is smaller than 10. If this is also true, we want the number to be multiplied by 3 and the value assigned to the same variable. Otherwise, if the number is not divisible by 2, we want the number to be multiplied by 5 and the value assigned to the same variable. In the bottom example, we are checking the same thing using the logical operator AND. There are two other logical operators, the logical operator OR, as seen on the slide, and the logical operator NOT. In the example on the slide, we are checking if the number is either divisible by 2 or divisible by 3. If any of those expressions is true, the program will add 1 to the variable and assign the new value to the same variable. The other category of control flow we will mention in this lesson is a for loop. A for loop is part of a program that can be executed several times in succession. The syntax for a for loop is as following. For an item in sequence, do this code or block of code. For is the mandatory statement and can be used only once. Item is an auxiliary variable that temporarily stores the value of an item from the sequence. We can give it any name. To call methods or functions or code on the elements of a sequence, we will call them on the name of the item we have defined. If we are iterating through a string, we iterate character by character. If we are iterating through a list, we iterate an element of a list by an element of a list. In is a reserved word used in the for statement. A sequence is a type of data where elements are ordered. We have learned that strings and lists are data types that are sequences. And finally, in the next line, we define code or block of code that will be executed for each item of the sequence. Don't forget about indentation. So the for loop takes one element in a sequence at a time and does some code. The code will be executed as many times as there are elements in a sequence. If we iterate through a string with four characters, the code will be executed four times. Let's look at some examples. In this example, we iterate through a string Monty Python. We state for, then give a name to uh, the auxiliary variable, for example, character, then n, and then the string Monty Python. The code we want to be executed is a message that says what value is currently stored in the auxiliary variable character. As you can see, the for loop iterates through every character and returns the message for every character. Of course, we don't have to execute code for every item in a sequence. Now we know how to do conditions. And we can do conditions in four loops. In this example, we are again iterating through a string Monty Python. But this time we are checking if the auxiliary variable character has currently stored a character that is either a lowercase a, a lowercase e, a lowercase i, a lowercase o, or a lowercase u. If the character is not one of those letters, no code is being executed. However, if the condition is met, then the message saying value of a vowel is printed. You can see here how with indentation we tell the program what parts to do under what conditions. In the next example, we are counting the number of vowels. Here we introduce the counter. That is a variable that is going to count something. 
Make it a practice to always reset counters to zero. Let's store in a variable s the string nobody expects the Spanish Inquisition. Then we iterate through the string character by character. And we state a condition. If the character is a lowercase vowel, increase the counter by 1 and assign the new value to the counter. When we print the counter, the program returns number 12. The string s has 13 vowels. Can you guess why is the result 12 and not 13? Well, the answer is that the condition only checks for the lowercase vowels. Since we have an uppercase i in inquisition, it didn't return this character. So in order to avoid situations like this, in the for loop we can convert the characters to lowercase as seen in the second example. Now the program will also catch the uppercase letter i because it has been converted to lowercase letter i. Now let's take a look at iterating through lists. When we iterate through lists, we iterate an element of the list by an element of the list. In the first example, we have just printed the element that was temporarily stored in the auxiliary variable named element. In the second example, we are printing the type of each element of the list. We can see that the first two elements are integers, the second element is a string, the third element is a list, and the fourth element is a float. As with strings, iterating through lists, we can also put some conditions. In the example, we are checking if the element of a list is divisible by 5. If it is divisible by 5, we are printing the element. So when the program comes across the elements 7, 21, and 3, it does not execute the code because the conditions are not met. In the second example, we are checking the same condition, but we are not printing the elements. This time we are adding the elements if they comply with the condition. So we add 15 plus 25 plus 10, and the program returns 50. Try doing the same thing, but with an element in a list on which you can't do addition. For example, you can have this list, but with one element containing a string. See what happens. We can also iterate through a list that contains elements that are strings. And we can print only the first character of each element. In the second example, we have the same list, but this time we calculate the average length of each string in the list. We do that by having a counter variable named length. In this counter, we will store the length of all the strings in the list. After iterating through the list, the counter length will have the total length of the elements in the list. Then we print the expression where we have converted the counter length to a floating point data type and have divided this number by the number of elements found in this list and this is 6 in our case. The program returned the average length of the element in a list which is 5.16666 and so on characters. In this lesson we have learned control flow so that our code is not only linear but can do conditions and loops. Let's see some code. 